Hi my loves, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life. Thank you so much for tuning in for another pick a card reading. So tonight, or today technically, we're gonna be focusing on healing and what messages you need to receive right now as far as um, ways to help you move past any obstacles or blockages that are blocking you from feeling really good and from thriving and having full 100% healing within your life. I'm gonna ask you to rely on your intuition 100%. Let's go ahead and get started. This is the first deck, second group, third group, fourth group, fifth group. Go ahead and pause this video if you need to. Keep in mind that for many of you guys, you are feeling called to pick more than one group. That happens to me a lot. You should respect your intuition. Whatever your intuition is guiding you to do is exactly what you should do and there are no such thing as mistakes, okay? That being said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is what I'm seeing for the first group and as I'm pulling the cards, I'm seeing them for the first time and this allows me to work with my intuition openly because that's what works best for me. The first card that I have for you is past life issue. This situation, has a basis in one of your previous lifetimes. Ask your angels to help you remember, release, learn, and heal from your past experiences. The next one is law of attraction. Relationships and activities that you once enjoyed are now changing as you become more sensitive and aware of energies. From the goddess oracle, we have Diana, focused intention, which goes really well with law of attraction, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Keep your unwavering thoughts, feelings, and actions focused on your target and you will make your mark. Then from Healing with the Angels, we have Retreat and Nature. The Rider Waite, because I'm always going to work with the Rider Waite. We have Six of Wands and the Justice card. From Flowers from the Dead, we have Buffalo, Abundance, and Earth. Summer, Bring to Fruition. Palm, apply past lessons, and oak, be strong but gentle from the Nature Speak Oracle deck. Now give me a second with this just for a minute. So the first thing that is coming to me instantly, you guys, is this connection obviously to the past. I don't see this exclusively as past life issues, even though this card suggests that it is connected to the past life this card of past life issues. Sometimes it is for some of you guys. I feel like as you're looking at your, these cards, you'll know if it is connected to a past life issue, especially things that are connected to generational curses that are kind of passed on, which we talked about last week. And if you didn't see that video, then that's up for you on my YouTube channel. But really what it is that I'm seeing with this is this act, this space of cause and effect and how past issues help are working to apply to the present moment. And basically what it is that I'm seeing around you is a need to go back into a space where you are remembering and you are believing, almost recklessly believing back in the abundance of the universe because it almost feels like there, I don't know if this is again because of what has happened to you in the past or issues that have happened to you in the past that are still kind of mingling and lingering here now that is making you kind of block your abundance and block your blessings. And I see it 100% as a space of faith, but I also see it as karma. And I see this as major, major lessons that you need to really kind of go through. When I see cards like this and when I see energy like this, this reminds me of someone that feels kind of beat up on because of circumstances. It almost seems like they do, 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 do. They're doing so much but they're not really reaping the reward of it. And it's to the point where you're at a space that needs healing right now. The main space that needs healing from you is you actually need to kind of retreat within yourself and spend time within yourself. And this is perfect timing for you at the time of, time of me filming this video, especially what's going on in the cosmos. But we're in this space right now where a lot of us are moving out of this feminine energy of receiving, but I see you needing to give to yourself. I see you needing to serve yourself and to fill your cup up. And I'm thinking that this is also, this is why I believe that these cards, this card of retreat and nature, this is effortless. This isn't you forcing it. In fact, the oak card is all about you learning how to be strong, but being gentle, which means that the seeds, this intention that it is that you've put, you know, from these past lessons, these experiences that you have gone through in order to help you to shape up 
into the person who knows exactly what it is that you want in the future. But sometimes, again, these circumstances around you can really beat you up. And, you know, when you continue to experience these lessons and these challenges that push you for the sake of your own growth, it can really wear down your resistance. It can really wear down your ability to believe in the future and what can happen because your resistance, like I said before, has been worn down. And basically what happens is that when you are worn down, you are being molded. You're being shaped into something, this next level version of yourself. And the universe realizes that who it was that you once were in the past or in past lives is not um, a person who will be able to uh, attract and be able to receive all of the gifts of what the universe has to give to you and all the things that are within your heart. If you didn't go through those past lessons, you actually wouldn't know what to ask for because at that time, at who you were in the past, again, maybe it's this life or the lifetimes um, prior, they that person would not be able to receive and to be able to continue to build on the blessing of what it is that's destined to come to you. That's one thing that I really want you to see within these cards is that this this energy of attraction is around you so strongly. You have the card of summer here, which brings, it. the message of it is bringing things to fruition. This is not something that is forced. It's something that has been planted over time. The oak a card from Nature Speak is all about that little tiny acorn seed that has been planted that grows not only for the temporary moment but forever. The oak is a symbol of longevity and lasting and providing and structure and strength and safety. That's what it is that we want in your life. It's your past life issues that really test your ability to feel safe and your ability to feel like you're able to attract and to bring in and you're in and for you to feel secure that's a main thing that it is that I'm seeing here and that's again it's connected to cause and effect because when we see the justice card it's almost like you know these things that have happened that may seem fair or maybe it doesn't seem fair but either way it's this universe kind of cosmically rearranging itself and kind of figuring out okay this is what she deserves or he deserves. This is what needs to be kind of tweaked a little bit more in order for you to move forward in a space where you are actually receiving the reward and receiving the benefit. But for right now, my love, I'm really seeing you kind of retreating into, a, into your nature. And when I say that, when I say nature, I want you to go into a space where it is effortless where it is gentle i don't want you to look at you know you being gentle and you retreating as you giving up or you you know not working your magic because nature works her magic she's never not working her magic she works with the cycles of the universe in ways that is assertive in ways that is passive in ways that are passive. And in this case, I actually see you, again, reconnecting back to your intention. Look how many intention cards you have here. You have the law of attraction, which is all about setting intentions and knowing exactly what it is that you want. This is energies changing around you based upon your mindset, based upon your energy, in order to match what it is that you ultimately want that is now bring, coming to fruition. These cards around you are about abundance and earth, bringing something to fruition, something actually growing and seeding. This is the actual, you know, card of something has been seeded and then now it comes to life. And this is the card of success and reward and recognition. So all of this is showing you, and, and then you have these past life issues here. You have three cards connected to the past and cause and effect and karma. So it's not, you know, it's not there to punish you. I don't want you to look at these things, these past lessons as punishment. I want you to look at it as growth. And if it wasn't for all of that, you wouldn't be able to be here in the space of, again, receiving and growing and um, bringing into your life, bringing things to fruition. Something is abs. I mean, look, it says it right here. I'm sorry the lighting is so shit right now because that's just New Orleans. Um, but... It says bring to fruition. That means something is actually manifesting here. Six of Wands is something manifested and you're celebrating it. You see that. Your people are acknowledging you. People are um, celebrating you, but also you need to celebrate yourself. But I don't see you forcing this. I see 
when you're working with law of attraction and when you're working with cause and effect, this is, you have already set the seed, you have already put that um, energy out there into motion. Now, I really want to see you being in a space where you are gentle, you're not forcing it, because nature herself, when she blooms and when she's starting to fruit, when the seeds have been planted, when you know you go through all the seasons from winter, spring, summer, and fall, and winter, spring, summer, and fall, it's because this, this cycle has happened in your life, but right now you're actually entering into a space, you are entering into a space where you are receiving, you're attracting, but I just don't want you to give up right now and to look at this as, you know, this is negative, these, this thing isn't going to happen. It is. It is. But it's more, how it's going to happen is more effortless and more easy and not you forcing it and pushing it. Um, the way to heal for you right now, again, I see is, again, you retreating. I see you taking some time out for yourself, maybe going on a trip, maybe you retreating into actually going out into nature and um, looking at how, you know, cactuses, like see how I have these cactuses around right now? I don't know if you could see this, but cactuses, they grow despite all of the circumstances and crystals are formed. Let me see if I can pull this out for you. Crystals are formed after being put under serious pressure. But if it wasn't for that pressure, they wouldn't be as beautiful and as stunning as they are, and their energy wouldn't vibrate as much. They would just be this lump of coal. But because they go through that pressure and that heat, they are transformed. That is what has happened to you, my love. And it depends on your circumstances around you if you're going to turn into spirit quartz, if you're going to turn into citrine, if you're going to turn into quartz crystal. It just depends, but all of it comes from the same source, but depending on your environment, depending on your past, where it is that you're coming from, that is showing who it is that you're shaping into. So all of the things that happen around you will have, a, a, have an effect on you, a cause and an effect. We see that with the justice card, but don't perceive it as negative. See it for what it is, which is incredible growth. And I do see you actually manifesting and bringing things into your life. But right now, in order for you to heal, I really want you to be easy on yourself, to be easy on others, to really pay attention to how things are making you feel before you kind of dive in or before you give up or before you give your all to it. I think that intent, let the universe do what it is that it's going to do. Let it kind of rearrange itself. And I think that you should ease back. You should make sure that you are um, getting enough sunshine, enough air. You're going for walks. You're not always doing, 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 doing all the time that you, you know, step away from your desk, that you step away from your responsibilities, that you do enjoy the nice, the pleasures of, of this life has to offer to you because that's also what the Buffalo card is all about. It's about feeling that abundance. But in order for you to um, receive it and to and to bring it into your life, you have to be experiencing it now by calling it in and enjoying what it is that you have around you presently. That is law of attraction, my love. Okay? So that's what it is that I see for you when it comes to healing and your healing message. I hope that that resonated. Um, if you love that video, then, or if you love that message, go ahead and subscribe and hit the thumbs up button or leave your comments because I'd like to see what how you feel and how this, how this resonated with you. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next, the next few cards. All right, my loves, so this is for card group number two, those of you guys that picked group number two. Now, as I'm flipping these cards, I'm seeing them for the first time as you are, and this helps me to connect with my intuition and allows it to allow it to flow effortlessly. So the first card I have for you is Sacral Chakra. It says, you are highly sensitive to chemicals additives, processed foods, and energies right now. Respect your sensitivities by avoiding harsh items, situations, and relationships. The next one is Divine Passion. Please ig ignore that candle wax there. I was working this card when I was doing some candle magic there. Um, it says, be honest with yourself. What is your heart's truest desire? Where do you think passion comes from? Where do you think it comes from? It comes from the sacral chakra and it comes from the root chakra sometimes. Isn't that interesting? The next card is Celebration. Healing. Signs. And then we have from Nature Speak Oracle, Relationship Balance. From Flowers from the Dead, we have Rat, Purge, and Simplify. 
from the Rider Waite, we have the Death card. And then from the Rider Waite, we have Queen of Wands. Okay, the first thing that comes to me, my baby love, is all about creation. <laughs> um, and it's kind of, this, this is tricky. Like, even as I say this, I want to be very careful about the words that it is I choose to talk about and the things that it is that I am saying here because I see something as actually being created here. Um, and that could be something as, as, you know, simple as artwork. It could be, uh, I'm seeing a lot of... <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of sexual energy. I'm seeing a lot of chemistry. I'm seeing a lot of sparks flying and passion, obviously, that's here. So I'm also seeing playfulness and children and fertility. Even with, I know when you see the death card, some people get a little scared, but I never have looked at the death card as a negative thing. In fact, I celebrate the death card when it shows up. To me, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing some major transformation going, in, going on in your life, but it is because you are about to give birth to some serious, some serious um, things going on here and you have been seeing this for a while. This reminds me so much, again, I don't know if you're a female or a male that's watching this, but the thing that reminds what I'm getting from this is like the cycles, the cycles of your body. When you are in a fertile phase, when you are in a fertile period, you, your body shows you signs of that and shows you signals of that. That's the intuitively what the, the, the message, the visual that I'm getting. Your body shows you signs, okay, I am starting to create or I am in a fertile phase right now. I am ready to be impregnated. I am ready to give birth. Your body and your environment, whether it be internal or external, has been showing you signs that something really is about to be created here. Something is about to to come to birth, to come to life. Now, when I say, when I when I say to you guys that I see this, that this is the visual that it is that I'm seeing, I don't want you to take it literal, um, unless it does apply to you in the, in the form that it is literal. But that's just how spirit speaks to me through visualization, in order for me to better give my messages to my tribe and for me to better give my message over to you. So let's say, you know, this this energy right here connected to the sacral chakra and the queen of wands and passion, this is showing me again that something is totally 100% getting created. And in order for you to prepare for that, your healing actually needs to come in you purging and simplifying and removing and cleansing in order for you to create the space for this thing to be born and to come to life. I'm seeing 100% the connection to the fifth house within astrology. Um, and if you don't know astrology and you, had, you don't study astrology, this is again connected to children, it's connected to creativity, it's connected to your passion projects, to giving birth, to having sex and dating. Um, intimacy like you know fun and having fun so that's that is a huge thing that it is I'm seeing and the signs are pointing you in that direction I don't know what also is going on within your astrology chart but I'm seeing a lot of fifth house energy and I'm also seeing a connection to the ovaries and giving birth and creating from that space and I'm and it makes sense too because this is the sacral chakra and that's where that comes from, is your ability to create, your ability to feel safe, to create, to express yourself, and also to give birth. But in order for this thing to give birth, in order for this thing to come to life and to enter into your life, there needs to be some release. There needs to be some things that you are cutting out because they will not serve you when, when it, for whatever this gentle spirit, this thing is that's trying to manifest. And it's as soft and as vulnerable as a child. And Again, you, you guys, I'm not saying that someone's going to get pregnant. I think that it's possible. It's, you know, that potential is definitely there because I'm seeing a lot connected to, again, and I mentioned the ovaries and fertility and that type of stuff. But it could be, again, your baby, this seed that it is that you're planting, this romance, this new love. It all comes from the sacral chakra. It's all about you enjoying it and celebrating it. But in order for it to survive, and for, in order for it to grow, you really have to cut out this negative shit that you know, you know, the signs are pointing and telling you, like, you need to get rid of this in order for that space to be able to be healed so that you can create this life.
And again, this could be dating, this could be relationships. This could, and that would make a lot of sense too with um, the maple tree and relationship balance here. Because let's say you're dating right now and you're you know, going out and meeting new people or you have someone in mind Again, this is someone that you love, something that attracts you, something that is pulling you. Um, it could be artwork again and creativity, but there are some things that it needs to be balanced. It needs to have the space to grow. And in order for it to grow, it cannot grow in a toxic environment because it won't survive. It won't be all that it can be. So that's what it is that I'm seeing here. That's what I see as far as healing goes. It's almost like knowing that there is something off balance here. I don't think that it's a negative thing. Let's say if you're a smoker or you know, you've know you been eating uh, heavier foods or having heavy relationships around you, that energy needs to be healed. That energy needs attention and needs to be purged and simplified in order to create and foster an environment that is thriving, that is healthy, in order to create whatever it is that's about to get born here, whatever it is that's coming into your life, because I do see it as a new birth. This is a very exciting um, spread that I'm seeing. Whoever picked number two, oh my God, I'm, I, I need to hear what it is that you're working on right now. I have to know. So leave it down in the comments before. But again, I, I don't see this um, as just one area of your life of total cleansing. I'm seeing it as multiple areas. Negative people cannot, cannot come with you. Or let's say you have friends who kind of kill a dream or kill a seed before by their like negativity or their realistic perspective on things, don't tell them what it is that you're working on. This needs to grow. This need You have to create a space in order for your creativity to seed, in order for love to grow, in order for you to have, I don't even want to say hope, because this is beyond hope. There's something that is going to, to come to life here and coming to fruition. But if you give this to the wrong person, if you tell them their negativity, their realistic perspective is going to diminish what can happen and so I see this as cutting out communication and it doesn't have to be negative it's just you know people serve their role and put them in the box of where they belong and what they're good for if they don't create positive energy and then if they don't give good life to this they don't get to be a part of this and that's okay not everyone is meant for everything not everybody not every not every relationship is going to check off every box for you um, when it comes to your diet and your lifestyle and your health, make sure that you are as healthy as possible. That's what it is that I'm seeing for healing. When it comes to your work-life balance, make sure that you have enough time and space to create because something needs to be created here. And when it comes to making space in your life, make sure that you have enough space to invite whatever this is, okay? So that's what I see for you. Let me know what it is that you're creating down in the comments. Okay, moving on to group number three. The next few cards that I'm receiving for group number three, and I'm, as I'm pulling them, I'm seeing them for the first time, as you are, in order to help me to connect with my intuition. You have Power Animal. Your animal spirit guide is a guardian to you and is helping you with this situation. You have Diana, the High Priestess. You have divine knowledge that can help others through your spiritual teaching. Intention. Blessings. From the Rider Waite, we have Eight of Swords, the Moon card, Iguana, Contentment and Satisfaction from Flowers from the Dead, and we have Gardenia, Emotional Protection. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing that I'm receiving, <clears throat> just a second. Okay, I actually had to pause just now because I feel a lot of uh, tension in my throat chakra and I feel like that's coming from my group number threes. In fact, your energy here is so different. The way that I feel as your cards are coming through is so different than group number one and group number two, although it's very similar, I think, to group number one. The first thing that I'm feeling that I have to tell you guys about when it comes to healing is throat chakra. Um, I don't know if this is something that, hold on a second. Hey Google, turn the music off, please. <laughs> I don't know if this is something that you need to say that's been sitting, you know, that you've been blocked, that you are so terrified and fearful of saying. The next thing that I'm feeling is I don't know how to say it, 
the next thing is I don't even know how to articulate. I don't, my, my brain is confused. I'm mentally foggy. Things are not what it is that they seem. Okay, here it is. Cause I was looking, I'm like, okay, I feel like this is like so moon card energy, but it's, it's almost like your worst case scenario. It's your brain thinking the worst of yourself or the worst of your circumstances. And it comes from a space of, it, I, I, and I'm feeling it more from the throat chakra. I'm feeling it more from my third eye. These cards right now, my love, are trying to, and even as I say it, I almost wanna like whisper. I almost want to like get you close and tell you to sit down and let's lower our voices and let's calm down. Even And then the next thing that I'm feeling is my third eye. And I feel like it needs cleansing. Like even as I'm sitting here, I wanna pull on my forehead and work on Reiki in order to clear out blockages when it comes to the third eye and your intuition. This is, the main thing that it is I'm seeing here, my love, is your worst fears, your your logical brain, your pro this is a need for deeper healing. All of these things, it's like, if you have anxiety, if you have an imbalance, if you have trauma, if you have something that has scarred you, I'm seeing a need to be really, you know, I don't, almost asking for help, almost asking for angels, almost asking for someone to come in and to help provide clarity. If you are under any influence or doing anything that blocks your third eye's um, vision or clarity, even something as simple as smoking too much weed, some people use weed or marijuana in order to psychically connect with themselves, but it almost ends up being crippling because they rely on it or they it ends up fogging them up, it, even though it's used to help you to connect with your third eye, but some of you guys don't need it. Let's say it's alcohol, let's say it's your diet, um, or whatever it is, there's something here that's blocking your your third eye, and it's, and the other thing that I'm seeing is so much fear, and it's more than just the Eight of Swords, because even as I'm sitting here, there's, I almost want to whisper because I feel like if I say too much or if I do too much or if I say the wrong thing, it's going to backfire. It's going, the worst thing is going to happen. And this could be an environment that actually is confining you. I want, as I'm sitting here and I'm doing this reading for my number threes, I want to almost take you in and coddle you and hold you and put you in a space where you feel safer, you may actually have to be in a spot where you have to physically remove yourself. And I also see you needing to ask for help. That's why I'm also think, thinking that the throat chakra is here because you need to ask for help. This is one thing that you don't need to do by yourself. Even, <clears throat> see I just keep choking. I keep choking when I'm working with my number threes because I started choking as soon as I pulled these cards. And it's not this incense, this incense has been burning. It's, it's, this is the energy and I wanna whisper it. It's, you have to do, you have to know when intuitively it is time to ask for help. You might actually have to go to someone, a healer, um, in order to ask them for healing. Even, you know when they say the healer needs to be healed? That can so 100%, because I do see you being a highly sensitive individual, um, but I don't see you, you know, I see some of, we all need each other and I see you needing to connect with somebody and asking them for a little bit, uh, some support here. And maybe it could be something as, as, um, as profound as like therapy and doing that type of healing. But it's just working through this need to speak out. It's almost like, um, I don't want to say that you're in a violent situation or anything like that because this this reading is definitely for a general audience, but it almost feels like, you know, you want to whisper it because if you say too loud, you might, you might trigger, you might cause, cause an, a reaction. Um, and that could, sometimes when we see the moon card and the eight of swords, this is, we are perceiving it to be worse than what it actually is. But other times this could be some really serious, you know, imbalances here that are going on. And I want to be honest with you about that. Um, the gardenia too, just seeing this card, it is so gentle, it is so sweet, and it really wants to protect you, always. And that is also what I'm seeing here is um, a need to protect. I Even with the iguana, with this card, it shows contentment and satisfaction, but I, when I see the iguana, I actually see you hiding. 
I see you blending in. I see you being inconspicuous and being invisible and almost wanting to be invisible. So I'm wondering why that is. And I think that that's a need to protect yourself or your angels are asking you to look at the signs and to even be invisible right now and to, you know, not do, maybe not act, but be in a space where you are really um, nurturing of yourself and being soft with yourself because that's what needs to be healed right now and there is this need to protect yourself I don't I don't know why that is and it, it almost I don't want to say it's creating fear but you might have a lot of fear the next thing that I'm seeing is that there are angels around you they're so protective of you right now I think that they are trying to reach out to you they are trying to speak to you they're trying to have you listen but for whatever reason, it's fear and your you know, third eye blocking, you know, it's your I don't know if you're cloudy or foggy or anxious or what, but I just see you needing to kind of nurture yourself and support yourself. I'm seeing root chakra and twelfth I'm sorry, not root chakra. I mean maybe, but I'm seeing fourth house within astrology, that's what's coming through to me, and twelfth house and eighth house. So this is like our Achilles, uh, Achilles tendon coming in, it's like, what makes me vulnerable? You hit that. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and it's it's messing with your need to feel safe and at home. That's what the, the fourth house brings. The fourth house is also connected to your sense of security and stability and your home environment. So that's another thing too that I want you to hear from me within this. With the fourth house, it's a space where you can hide and you, it needs to be safe. It needs to be your escape from the, from the outside world. So doing all that you can, setting intention for your home environment to be a space that is your retreat from the world where you can hide, where you can heal, where no one expects anything from you. Set intention for that because your angels are actually working around you now in order to create a space where you can pull back, where you can hide from the world and you can focus on protecting yourself and um, you know maybe not getting so overwhelmed and bogged down by expectations or what the world is asking of you or maybe this a relationship or a person or family members that you need to be away from. So that's as as negative as that sounds. I actually think that it's a positive thing. Um, this reading is kind of positive because at least I can see that you and that you can see that you are in need of some protection right now, and you're allowed. You're given permission right now to be a little bit more invisible, and this means that you can ask for help, and that means going to a healer, going to a guide who can provide a little extra energy work and healing for you, journaling and you know connecting with women, even from like a church or a group environment that is very spiritual. And this power animal card, when it comes to this, I'm really curious if you are seeing signs of animal spirit guides around you. And I made a video about that, about connecting with your power animal and connecting with your spirit animal. So, because there's a lot of, or even connect like, you know how we have um, little, like I have a dog and he is my little world, you know, he's my safe space and I nurture him, I give to him and I know that with him I'm always safe. I know that he loves me unconditionally and that type of stuff and just having his little spirit around me is so healing to me and I'm never truly alone outside of the fact that my angels and my guides are with me at all times but, you know, he's there and I spend time with my family and my friends and the people that it is that I want to spend time with. So it's almost like, you, you know, being in that space where your animals or the animals that are around you are very protective of you and you can cuddle them and they can just, their presence alone is very healing. So I'm seeing that here. But at least for right now, my love, what I am seeing for you is to emotionally protect yourself, to maybe, to not give too much of yourself right now because this is bigger than, you know, um, for you to be able to do by your all on your own. I think that you maybe people need to stop asking you for shit. <laughs> and I think that you need to go in a space where you do feel safe and secure and you are invisible right now so that it things can pass. And don't think that, you know, if you are invisible that you're going to miss out on opportunities. This is the universe giving you permission right now to to retreat and to pull back and to kind of, you know, self confine yourself, meaning like you create like an oasis, like a little a moat around you right now so that you can actually, 
you know, figure things out. And while you're doing that, ask for help. You know, ask for another healer. Ask for clarification. Ask for your angels to come in. You will actually be blessed. Even if you have this moat around you, you're not forgotten. You're just invisible for right now, and that's for your own protection, and that's what it is that I'm seeing for you. Okay, my love? So I hope that makes sense. And let me know in the comments, you know, in what ways this resonates with you, and if you've been going through it right now, because I would like to, I would like to hear, I would like to know. And I'm very protective of you as well. Moving on to my card group number four. And as I'm pulling these cards, I'm seeing them for the first time, as you are. We have the heart chakra. The answer that you seek is in your heart right now. Be open to giving and receiving love. I love heart chakra stuff right now. Ooh, goddess. Kali, endings and beginnings. The old must be released so that the new can enter. Dreams. Forgiveness. Ten of Cups. Ace of Cups. Hummingbird, unique and distinctive from Flowers from the Dead. And Nature Oracle, sexual energy. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh my jeez. Wow. <laughs> I don't know why this is funny right now, but it is. <laughs> okay, you guys, pardon me. So you guys know I get... <laughs> you guys know when I'm working with these readings, I get visuals. You know that. <laughs> if you don't know, then now you know. The one thing that is coming through to me is... It, it actually is the orgasm. <laughs> How do I say this? Yeah, it's the orgasm, and um, basically it's this buildup of energy. Y'all know what an orgasm is, but it's this buildup of energy that creates this release, And but in order for that release to happen, you have to be open. You have to be comfortable with allowing you know intimacy to come in, allowing yourself to be totally vulnerable. You can't be thinking, oh, am I cute when you're orgasming, you know what I mean? Like, you can't, you know, think, you know, feel uncomfortable or unsafe in order or not attracted, you know, in order for the orgasm to occur. So there is this need to be 100% raw, 100% open. And that it's funny too, because it rem the quote that just came through is this French quote and it's called Le Petit. Let me Google it really quickly. Yeah. Le Petit Mort, which is the small death. It's a popular, ref a French popular reference for sexual orgasm. And basically it's a tiny death, meaning like a release. And that's what it is that I'm seeing for you is this Le, uh, Le Petit Mort, which means that there is this, in order for you to experience this death that's been building up, in this release, you have to, you know, you're essentially letting go and releasing and, and you know, allowing it to be. You know, you're not expecting anything more than what, other than what it is that you are, and you have to be in a space where you're free to do that. So, even though this is, you know, sexual, this energy that is coming through is very intense, it doesn't necessarily have to connect with you know, sex or an orgasm. That's just how the the visual is coming through to me as I'm working on this reading with with you. And basically what this is is that when we see death and we see the death card, and I personally, I'm surprised that you don't have the death card here. I'm sure if I was to take these cards right now and shuffle them, the death would come through. But Kalima is all about releasing, releasing the old and kind of severing ties with things that don't make you feel safe and secure and she does that in order to protect you so that you can open up to receive more, so that you can experience more, so that you can be in a state of ecstasy and bliss. And that's what I'm seeing here, especially with the Ace of Cups and the Ten of Cups because these cups, these cards do bring bliss and they do bring joy and pleasure into your life. This is something that is going to be uniquely your own. You cannot fluff it up and make it any prettier than what it is. In fact, you know, just like how the orgasm is, if you're thinking so much about, you know, am I looking good right now or, you know, does this make sense to other people, you are blocking yourself from being 100% real, raw, authentic 
in order to experience total bliss for yourself. So what I'm seeing is uh, this could be self-love, this could be releasing relationships or people or blockages within that. That's where your healing comes from. Uh, releasing those things so that you can have this tiny death within your life. This release of the old and this birth of the new. This, these cards are very, very powerful. And the energy is sexual because in the spiritual world, you know, sex and the metaphor of sex and the symbolism of sex is not, you know, the way that society sees it. It's a total connection. It's the total union of two separate forces coming together, a release for the sake of total bliss to come into your life. That's what I'm seeing for you guys, number four. And again, it could be sex for you, it could be sexual attraction, but more than that, look at it as the greater picture because that's how spirit speaks to me. They give to me these signs, these signals, and you know, sense, and words, and voices, and message, like um, visuals, visuals that I can see in order to better give you my message. And that's what I'm seeing is that there is a total release, a total acceptance of the past, a total acceptance of who you are, a total acceptance of what it is that you want, not fluffing it up, not making it pretty, accepting it as is, and that is going to be a moment of total transformation, of total release, in order for you to step into this space of bliss and ecstasy. It comes from your heart, it's been speaking to you through your heart, your heart is divine, your heart is um, you know, flaw, flawless. It's that is who you are to your to your core. That is the beauty of and the essence of who it is who who you are to your core. And if you try to you know make the heart anything other what, than what it is, if you try to you know paint your heart and um, lie to your heart, your heart doesn't accept lies. Your heart knows this is right or this is wrong. I'm not going to pretend. So that's what I'm seeing here is. You not lying to yourself, you not lying to your partner, you not lying to the world. This is who I am. I'm not going to paint myself out. I'm not, my, my responsibility is not to make sure that, she, is not to make you accept me. I accept me. So I step in a space where I am my authentic, real, raw self for the sake of my own pure bliss, for the sake of my heart's truest desire. And I release anything now for, because the, me releasing is going to be the tiny death that steps me into pure ecstasy and bliss. That's what I see for you. Now, when it comes to forgiveness, I'm seeing this as, you know, when you say goodbye and when you release, you know, the flaws of yourself, you are not, or if you have to forgive others for the sake of, you know, what's to come, you're not being, you're not saying simultaneous that, simultaneously that, you know, what has happened was okay. You're just saying that for the sake of myself, I'm just not going to hold on to this anymore. So I let that go. That's how I'm seeing this card as forgiveness is I just refuse to carry anything that will hold me back and I let it go and it is what it is. So there you go. That's what I see for you. I could go on on this more and more, but I feel like you pretty much got it. What is your orgasm in your life? Like, what is your bliss? What is your Ace of Cups and your Ten of Cups? Because, and what do you have to release in order to get to that? Also, of course, this card is dreams, the card of dreams. When you are still, when you are quiet, your dreams will show you your heart's truest desires and what's going on subconsciously within you. So the, I see this for doing dream work and subconscious work in order to help you to kind of release, you know, from these old patterns, these old ways that you may be holding yourself back. Or, the word is expectation that is coming through as far as this expectation that you have for yourself or people have expectations of you or, oh, you should be this within a relationship. No, I don't have to be anything. I don't have to do anything. This is what is my main concern. My heart being authentic and honest and truth, truth, truthful with my heart is my only concern because I can't lie to my heart. I can lie to you, but I can't lie to my heart. So that's what it is that I'm seeing, working your dreams, working dream magic in order to connect even deeper with um, your heart's truest desires and what is ultimately about to explode <laughs> in your life. So that's what I see for you, group four. Mm -hmm. You better tell me what's going on in the comments. I mean, you don't have to. Maybe, potentially, I can already see it. <laughs> All right, moving on to group number five. Okay, so this is a reading for group number five. And as I'm pulling these cards, I'm seeing them for the first time, just like you are. Fairies, you have a strong bond with the fairies and your life purpose involves helping Mother Nature. 
from Goddess Oracle. This is Athena, Inner Wisdom. You know what to do. Trust your inner wisdom and take appropriate action without delay. The owl, for some reason, is really sticking out to me here. I don't know why that is. There's a lot of birds in that card, too, though. Um, music. Freedom. Ooh, King of Pentacles and the Hermit. Dragonfly, joy and love. Spider, jealousy and grudge. Meadow, growth and abundance. Shaita. And spring, new growth. Okay, the first thing that is sticking out to me that I cannot ignore is the color green and wings. I'm seeing a lot of wings with this deck. Look how many wings you guys have. You have the dragonfly, you have the owl, the card of, I don't know if you can see that, but the owl that stood out to me is the bird. You have the fairies which have their wings, they're known, they're little humans that have wings and then there's many birds here all over. There's some wings over here. There's a bumblebee, there's a butterfly, um, and then you have the dragonfly that has their wings. The freedom card, which is little angels with wings. That's what's really standing out to me and the element of, or the color green. And these things are standing out to me because I actually feel like, you know, it's almost being, it's being very playful. It's being very light. It's being very, you know, silly and enjoying things and having a good time, even with this spider card. The thing is, is that the first thing that I think is if you have a spider, right? The spider creates this web and the web is there because things are going to fly into that web and that is what catches. That's what the spider feasts, feasts on. Even spiders have webs that are strong enough to catch birds and they will eat those birds. But the web itself is there because it's going to catch things that are going to fly into it. That's the main, this thing, I want to flick this away so badly. And this, what is this thing? What is this person or this spirit around you that is trying to catch you, that is trying to take your joy? You know instinctively, like I feel called to ask you. I don't feel called to tell you. I feel called to ask you. Because it's like, be observant of that. There is someone or something around you that is has a grudge towards you or jealousy towards you that is trying to trap you and take your joy. Meanwhile, you're over here like being called with, with freedom and joy and love and music. And spring, that's when things start coming out. When the birds start coming out. When birds start um, growing their wings and trying to fly and insects come out and butterflies start coming out and the fairies fairy is a time of you know fairies come out during spring and summer whether you believe in them or not but that energy is light it's playful it's joyful but there's something here that's trying to catch you and these cards are asking you to be very observant i don't see you my love as being you know spending time by yourself exclusively unless you are really truly enjoying your time by yourself when i see the hermit card i'm actually seeing this as the owl i see the hermit as the owl being super observant the hermit looks in looks through the darkness and has a light and that's what I'm seeing here is that you actually have a lot of light energy around you. It's not, you know, it's not like you actually having a lantern. What is that light? That light is enlightenment. That light that you have is positivity. That light that you have is love. That light that you have is blessing. So that's what it is that I'm seeing here for the, for the hermit for you is you shining this light and being observant and seeing through the darkness who the fuck is trying to catch you and trying to take your joy. And this could be you, you know, this could be your own, you know, comparison to others that is blocking you from new growth, from growth and abundance. You have two cards here suggesting that there is so much growth and abundance around you. And on top of that, you have cards around you that are showing that you are in a space of freedom and joy and love and playfulness. That's where you are at. 
But there is something here that is really trying to catch you right now. What is this thing? I don't want to tell you what that is. I feel like you need to observe it. You need to watch it and find it and see it and ask yourself. I feel so called to tell you to ask yourself, what, what is blocking me? What is trying to catch me and steal my joy? You have to ask yourself that because that's the hermit. That's actual the, the actual message of the hermit card. The hermit card is not always about being alone. The hermit card is about you asking you the questions so that you can see. This this is um this actually this these readings is pissing me off. <laughs> this fifth this fifth card. Because I see so much like like who does that? You know, like that's it, it. That's the energy that I get because you guys know I feel things like with my group number three and my all of my groups I feel different things. They bring different energy with this card. I am so irritated I get this feeling of so much irritation Because I'm like how dare you try to take my joy my music my love my creativity my prosperity You have so much growth around you. The meadow is so playful. This is where you see deer frolicking in the woods, you see fairy energy, you see flowers growing and being abundant, and then you have a spider's web just trying to catch you off guard. Who is that? What is that? That is not okay. That's like, I need boundaries. You know, I need you to stay over there because I have so much freedom and so much joy and so much light and pleasure and fun that is coming from my spirit, from my heart that needs to be expressed. How dare you try to take away my growth? And if this is you, then it's like, why would I block my own blessings? There is so much abundance out there for me. There's so much things that are trying to grow into my life for not just for the present moment, but forever. The King of Pentacles is all about you know security and creating safety and stability for you and making even money and prospering off of your ability to create from, you know, in all types of ways. The King of Pentacles, what a lot of people don't know about him is he's very sensual. You know what I mean? As realistic and as practical as he is, he loves the senses. He loves joy. He loves music. He loves a good meal. He loves touch. He loves, um, you know, nice fabrics and getting his hands dirty and seeing his garden around him. Do you see all that I've created? I did this. I created this. And that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing so much growth around you. But there is something here. You need to ask yourself. That is where the healing comes from is you asking yourself, who, what is blocking my, my growth here? And they're doing it out of spite. They're doing it to block you. That's where the healing needs to come from. And it almost seems like what really pisses me off even more is that it almost seems like the happier you become, the more they try to spin a web and the more they try to catch you. This thing needs to be, I just want to flip it over and block it out because we're entering into a space right now. You're entering into a space right now where your wings are trying to make you fly. You are trying to, you're opening into this new area, this new space within your life where you are prospering, you are growing, you are creative, you are making music, you are hearing music. You see things other people can't see, but that's because their own negativity blocks them. You might actually be in like a new love relationship or you might actually be creating music or creating something here and instead of people celebrating it, they're almost trying to beat you down or be like, no, it can't happen. Like, don't tell me what can happen. This is like someone who says to you, oh, this dream that you have, it can't come to fruition. How do you know? Are you speaking from your own experience? Because you're not speaking from mine. Your destiny of failure is not mine of reward. Ugh, I'm fucking irritated with this card. No, 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 like it's just no. You have wings, my love. Those wings come from your heart space, and I see heart chakra all over this. Ugh, I'm done. That's your that's your message. I'm out. <laughs> I love I love my group number five, but if I feel this level of irritation for you through your cards, then I I just really truly want you to take it seriously. There's a reason why you picked number five. You could be making music. You could be making art. You could be in love right now. You know when people. Um, fall in love and they start hearing music differently and they start listening to the lyrics and they start applying or you start listening to music and it lifts your spirits up instead of listening to this person or this thing put on music that lifts you up be very mindful of what is is um, lifting you up and filling your spirits because 
I, whatever this is, I don't even want to flip this over. I don't even want to touch it because that's how irritated I am with it. But you just, you're in a space, fairies are so light and playful, but sometimes there's always that one thing that always tries to take that joy. And it's up to you to decide if you allow it. All right, my loves, that's what it is that I'm seeing for you guys. This message of healing, oh my goodness. That's what it is that I see. So make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Make sure that you're hitting the thumbs up button, that you're leaving your comments down below because there are plenty more videos where this came from. And I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much for tuning in for another authentic reading by Jessica of Bahati Life. I'll see you soon. Bye.